here. <clears throat> um, so we are going to move on now to our second solution review, which will be given by Aaron Dean, who is the Senior Director of Data Strategy at RxA. RxA is one of our premier partners. They, um, they're an award-winning partner, have done a lot of really cool things with Domo and with artificial intelligence. And um, Aaron um, just loves his job at RxA. He does everything from strategy. He gets into the weeds and build stuff. He consults on he consults with customers. Um, so we are excited to hear from Aaron. He does one of the things that I love about Aaron, and he's great at bridging the gap between just normal data analysis and getting into some more sophisticated. He makes it easy to get into some more sophisticated artificial intelligence predictive analysis, which is what he is going to talk to us about today. Um, so the title of his session is Framing Challenges and Scoping AI or App Solutions with Domo, um, specifically focusing on a supply chain use case. So I am going to turn it over to Aaron. I'm excited to hear um, what he has to share. Awesome. Thank you, Richard. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay. It's a teeny bit quiet, but we can hear you. Okay. Excellent. All right. Thank you so much for the introduction, Richard. Hello, everybody. Uh, as you can see on your screen, my name is Aaron Dean. I, uh, I work for RxA, and it's been a pleasure being able to rub elbows with a wide variety of different people. Um, I'm excited to talk about the use case today, but I want to give a little bit of background, uh, given the, the time constraints that we have and the, the, the really dynamic and broad nature of what can be done in Domo uh, will, will ultimately be better represented if, if I, I cover a couple of things first. So uh, when I first started as, uh, as a Domo user, I didn't know anything about data. I didn't know anything about SQL. Uh, I, I did not know how to put a join together, and I like to tell the story of how uh, I did a trillion and a half row join by accident um, and, and called up Domo and was like, uh, is everyone still alive? So um, I started from, from very little uh, and uh, here I am. So I think it's a testament to what Domo can be, what Domo can do. Uh, and as such, Domo has really been the tool by which I've become who I am. It's a tool that can be very empowering uh, and can really aid in collaboration. Uh, and we can get to a lot of these descriptive statistics, to a lot of these valuable cards and pages and stories, but really bridging the gap on what to do next and how to, how to get people comfortable to make a decision is extremely difficult. Uh, and time and again, I think that's where uh, the value proposition gets a bit more complicated. So my philosophy really comes down to a lot of data curation. And I think that um, today we're gonna see sort of how I think and how I see uh, success occur through the context of a supply chain use case, which now uh, during COVID is really quite poignant. Every one of us has been affected by it in some way, shape or form, either professionally or personally. And uh, really what I would like to achieve today is to really provide you with a concrete example of how this can be done, how it can be executed, how it can be iterated upon, and to really prepare your organization for further engagement and empowerment with, with Domo. Uh, so uh, I'm sure there'll be a lot of questions. Uh, please feel free to either hold them at the end or um, as John did, I'll provide my email. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, but I first wanna give a, a little shout out to Carlos. Uh, he had called this the, the hello world of AI. And I, I, I think that that's really quite, quite uh, fitting. So, um, just a couple more stories and guidelines, and then I'll, 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 share, I'll share what I have. But um, for those of you who have had the pleasure of, of meeting Keith White, um, he told me from the very beginning that Domo is fundamentally about iteration. We, we aren't really informed until we're informed enough to identify what we're curious about, uh, what we're missing. Um, and uh, in the process we make, well, we can make quite a mess, which I think is, is why John's conversation was so valuable. It is important to clean up after ourselves. Uh, but the human attention span really needs these checkpoints in the analytic life cycle. We need to, to feel like we're not you know, back treading and getting back to where we were before. And I think uh, rather than focusing purely on raising the bar or ceiling, uh, we might wanna consider raising the floor and getting more people involved into the data so that way the, uh, the AI and the apps, the various other tools that we build 
uh, can really um, ultimately coincide with, with them. So let's start simple. Let's think about accessibility. Let's think about reproducibility. Let's consider our audience. Of course, we're aiming for stakeholders, but uh, there'll be more credibility to the platform and what we build if, uh, if, we, if we consider others. And that will lend credence to, uh, I think, one of the most magical things that can happen in Domo when departments are collaborating. So uh, I think that's probably enough of the high-minded stuff. I'm going to dive into the use case now, and uh, we will go from there. So let me share my screen. All right. So I, uh, for those of you I've talked to about PowerPoint, I'm trying to get away from it. It's always much more fun to be able to present things in Domo. Uh, so I figured, hey, why, why the heck not, right? And I talked a little bit about the objective here. I also really like to have fun. I think making things as engaging as possible is really the way to go. Uh, and Ben Shine is not the only person that's obsessed with uh, cooking related metaphors. I have, I've, I've got a bunch of them, um, but I like to talk a lot about curation. I like to talk a lot about uh, mise en place, which is effectively for, the, for those of you who, who like to cook, like getting everything laid out and ready uh, to put things together makes it much more easy to do so. So um, what we're doing in this use case is starting with uh, sales, right? That um, in many organizations, I find that uh, one department might be really leading the charge on the usage of demo. And in this case, I think that um, the sample data that I've put together, you can see quite, quite readily that there's a difference in the average of, of units of sales. This is of a, of a given skew, changes from before COVID at 348 to uh, during COVID at 927. So just from a, a summary level, we're, we're looking at, at some descriptive statistics and getting curious. Uh, so some background on, on this data, we're looking at a single SKU and its subcomponents. Uh, there's about 12 of them in all. And I wanted a simple example here, not just because of the, the time frame that we have, but also because uh, it's valuable for us to be able to communicate with our, uh, with our customers, with our clients, with our coworkers, et cetera. So we're gonna assume that we've already really identified some of the preliminary stuff to get here. We know what our top items are. We've already identified that this one is very valuable. Uh, and we're gonna assume that there's a lot of open orders on this, that we could sell more if we had more. In fact, we've, we've heard that from our customers as well, that they would buy more if we had more to sell. So. Uh, effectively, then we start to ask the question, well, what, what can we do to do that? This might very well be uh, an issue between sales and production. And what I wanted to do was really demonstrate some of the things that we can already leverage in Domo uh, that maybe don't get used as often to really help flush out a question like this that will ultimately prepare us for, for AI and apps more readily. So um, who's responsible for, for this latency in, in our ability to, to get these items out? Uh, if our customers are saying that to us, there may be internal factors, there may be external factors, but mapping this out in a way uh, that can be useful um, will help us contextualize that. And uh, apps can ultimately help us bring in context that we learn along the way. And AI can help us focus on areas that might be um, more, more valuable. So we're looking at production data. We're going to look at some purchasing data. Uh, and then we'll get into some of the do's and don'ts of, of, of how that, that works with, with AI and apps. So I love date diff functions. I love comparing dates. I love when we have goals that we want to work against uh, versus, uh, versus reality and getting a sense of what's happening here. Um, and in this example, Again, for, for one SKU and the components that, are, uh, that we're ultimately purchasing for it, uh, we're, we're trying to produce this item uh, and effectively we're really, um, we're, we're finishing items much earlier than we're supposed to. Uh, and that's, that's really what, what this card indicates that roughly, let's say, you know, uh, a, a week or so, we're, we're producing items too, too quickly based on the target that the customer might actually want them. And as a result, uh, some of our parts ultimately get taken from other production orders that are supposed to ship. And in this use case, we've actually ended up having a bunch more late, uh, late production orders and late shipments as a result of that. So in this desire to ship product, sometimes along the way, uh, items will be taken and this 
supply chain, this production chain uh, can become a bit problematic. Now, where, where would apps really fit into this equation? And this is really where we start talking about it. And that is that oftentimes um, we have the ability in something like Salesforce to create our own uh, fields. Maybe we could enter in why for a given production order uh, it was late. However, in some instances, we don't have that ability and we might need to create uh, something for that in, in Domo, which, which we've done. So we can create our own reason codes. And in this example, it seems like we have a lot of users that are ultimately not entering in what they, what they should. We could use alerting here to, to let them know that they need to go in and fix that. Uh, but we're having quality issues with the components that we're getting and uh, material shortages. So as a result of that, we can start picking back layers of the onion to be able to better understand why this is happening. And we can assume that if users were to uh, add in more of, of the reason codes that are, are important, we, well, we're going to assume that there's a, a similar distribution across quality and material shortages. Well, both of those might be issues with what's coming from our, our vendors. And uh, if we look at, at this here, uh, fundamentally, we can see that um, we have a supplier commit date. That's when they say they're going to ship it to us and the arrival date, which is when we actually receive the item. And the vast majority of the components that we're receiving for the SKU are arriving late after the commit date that, that the, the vendor, the manufacturer has ultimately promised us. So we're not getting our items on time. When we do get the items on time, we're using them too early. And as a result, we're not really in sync in our, in our uh, supply chain. And uh, I've seen this quite a bit that understanding one variable at a time, understanding the sort of the story that's being told is very important. And um, with, with the remaining time, I want to, to just quickly take a look at a few more cards and then get into uh, the last part of, of this. So uh, one of my favorite alerts in Domo that often gets overlooked uh, are the alerts for kurtosis and skewness. And this is really valuable from a descriptive statistics standpoint, because with a histogram, we are able to have a better understanding of when our data might normalize, when it might be more available for uh, inferential testing, for, for, the, for the beginning phases of data science, and ultimately to be used for hypothesis testing. So it's pretty amazing that Domo can essentially let us know when our data is ready for higher brain stuff, right? We don't need to spend tons of time looking through it. We can do some curation, set it up, and, and ultimately be informed when, when this is happening. And I think that this is something that, that should be more accessible. And, and my hope today is to, is to really cover that a bit more so that way uh, people can take advantage of this. So effectively, once we know that our data is normalized, we can start uh, doing very, very simple tests on it, which is really the building block for, for AI, knowing when, when that occurs. And I'll, I'll talk a bit about that now. So we might see some changes in averages. We might begin to really see that our data has some value that we want to explore further. And we don't necessarily always know how to do that. Well, we can look at aspects of cor correlation. We can use our cards to try to understand trends that might exist or relationships that might exist between items. We can even uh, summarize data and look at its averages and get a sense of, okay, what's my sample size for this? How many times have I bought this item? Uh, are my, my means, my medians, and my modes very similar? That would be important for understanding that the distribution is, is also normalized. Uh, and then once that occurs, how do I package that information with my perspective as a, a professional in my given department and transmit that information to my data science team or to my analysts so that way they can, can take it to the next step, to the next level? And really, that's, that's what I wanted to, to achieve today is to talk, talk a bit about that. So really, uh, from this standpoint, we can start to hypothesize what might be occurring in the data. Um, maybe it, it's, we can say um, there are certain treatments that we could use to, to try and change the average amount of time. Maybe we, re need, we need to renegotiate with a given manufacturer, uh, or uh, we need to essentially come up with other clever ideas. Again, this is very much use case dependent, um, but we may also be able to use simple statistical testing. And I think that um, while 
it's important to say, I don't think you have to go past this. We're not expecting everybody to become a data scientist overnight. Uh, if, if you are a data scientist and someone is coming to you with this level of curation, this level of background effort, you're going to be in a much better position to really make some, some changes, make some choices, and take some action with that data. Um, and then similarly, you might also have a better understanding of what information you're missing, what it is that you need more of. Uh, and that's really where I think apps can really coincide with AI development and with statistical testing. It could be that um, you want to add in further reason codes for why for why your data, um, why, why production orders might be late. So in this example, um, we can assume that, that maybe a more modern CRM is being used and that information can be entered in. But if that is not the case, then uh, we might be able to create an app within Domo that allows us to build that information and write it back to the system. So we can, we can start telling a story much more holistically with the leveraging of apps, we can prepare our data to become ready for, for AI, for, for data science and machine learning. And we can make it easy on ourselves. And I think that if, if we really take the standpoint of how do we boil this down to one variable at a time, how do we take the pressure off of ourselves to really think that we need to um, you know, have the answer necessarily, but to invite people to, to collaborate with us Demos power can can really uh, can really shine. So, I think that uh, I wanted to leave a little bit of space for Q and A, uh, just in case anyone else has any other questions. I think we've got maybe a minute or so left. I'd be happy to uh, answer whatever I can, or if you ha perhaps have a more long form question, uh, my email is right here. So please feel free to drop me a line. 